The world of professional sports is always exciting, always entertaining, and always very lucrative. But when you see a situation where a, an athlete or a player is taken on the governing body of his sport, know that the war is not to be trifled with. Hello and welcome to Game On this evening on New Central Television. My name is Baba Tunde Kweki. We thank you so much for joining us. As we always say, you could be anywhere in the world doing anything, but you've decided to spend the next one hour with us here on the show, and we do not take it for granted. Don't forget, we're streaming live on YouTube and are also using our social media handles at X, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, you do know the handle already that's at N Central TV. Welcome once again. Not doing the show alone tonight. It's a uh, three-man show. My immediate right has Okwe Adebari looking all dapper, <laughs> as if he's uh, coming from a wedding ceremony. Uh, <laughs> you want to tell us something we don't know? No, not anytime soon. Not anytime no, soon. When okay. the time is right. Just you know. wanted to, just wanted to <laughs> clear the air. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Okwe. Oh, a pleasure. And my far right is one of the men I do hold most dear, a very good friend, a senior colleague, one of the most respected journalists in this uh, part of the continent, Toy Ibitoy, uh, who is a former media officer of the Super Eagles of Nigeria and former uh, senior special assistant to the former minister of sports development also joins us as well. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, Tony. Thank you, Tony, for the opportunity. I don't, to know, about, show. I don't know about <laughs> the opportunities. You're the one gracing the show, so we're, we're absolutely delighted to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Okay. And, uh, well. I mean, as you said, Okwa is looking sweet. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's something good uh, uh, in the offing. Speaking about something good, is there something you want to tell us about uh, a certain uh, Black Scorpion yes. football mm. club? Yes. That, that definitely concerns you. Yes, I mean, the Stingers. As the, you Stingers said, yes, from, the Stingers, yes. Uh, from Ogomosho. Yeah. That's the, the pet of uh, the former sports minister, uh, my boss, mm. uh, Sunday Dari. I mean, he, he's, he's a man who loves uh, sports. A couple of months ago, he started something for basketball as well. Yes, yes. Uh, putting a, a group of boys together to form a basketball club. And now he's uh, come to football mm. with uh, the, uh, Black mm. the, 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 the Black Scorpions from uh, I, I need to ask. I need to so ask. They, if an agent came to you and said, I want to sign your child for the Black Scorpions, it's, it sounds a bit... Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't we have people who support the Red Devils in our Oh, oh, oh there, we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if actually have a proper devil, yeah. a Red mm, Devil with yes. a pitchfork on the conference. Uh, yeah, yes, so it, it's good. But, mm. but let's see how far um, it goes with this. But, I mean, he's always shown that he loves the sports. Mm. He loves to get involved. And um, I just wish him the best of luck with this project. And I hope that the club can uh, turn out to be... Um, all he wants it to be. All he wants it to be, mm. make impact, not just in yeah. Nigeria, but beyond the shores of the country. Definitely. I think one of the, the aims of the club is also to promote grassroots football, mm. a platform for young players to get into professional football and to do well. So hopefully they're able to achieve that because that's great. We need that for develop, football development in Nigeria. So if you can get that from the Black Scorpions, mm. why not? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, but another interesting thing about uh, the uh, club is that they'll be playing in Ubumashu. And to the best of my knowledge, the Ubumashu Stadium... Uh, it's not in the best of shape. Ever since I was uh, actually went to FGC Obumashaw, that stadium has never been completed uh, to the best of my knowledge. Will yeah, it be there, ready? There was, a, for there, there was uh, some first lift um, at some point, mm. uh, but then maybe this is an opportunity for us to upgrade some of the facilities mm. there. Uh, don't forget that uh, Lautek also have got true. a football pitch. True, very true. And uh, I mean, let's see. I mean, it, it, we, I know they want to play in the, in the, in the amateur, yeah. mm -hmm. amateur league. We also have um, a club, Crown. Crown of Ogumon uh, We yeah. play higher up. Mm. So it's an opportunity for us to upgrade these facilities and uh, uh, touch the, the base, touch okay. the grassroots and provide opportunities for young mm. talents who are there in uh, Gumosho to play up to the highest level. Okay. We'd like to wish uh, um, former Minister of Sports Development, uh, Sunday Dari, all the best with his new pet project, the Black Scorpions of uh, Obomashaw. Sounds like uh, singing their way to the top. Singing their way to the top. <laughs> there, there we go. What, I think Tony has already come up with, that, with a motto, club motto for them. Yeah, that's singing that's, their way to the top. So brilliant. Definitely. Singing their way to glory. That's, uh, that promises to be really good. But let's uh, start, start uh, the uh, show on a very fiery note. And it's uh, really surprising, considering that the athlete involved is known as one of the calmest, most level-headed, most gentlemanly uh, persons you will ever meet in the world of sports. And I'm talking about Nigeria's number one table tennis player and Africa's number one table tennis player as well, 
uh, Arunon Khodri. Now, he's threatening legal action against the World Table Tennis, questioning its practices after facing a point deduction and an undisclosed fine. He's threatening legal action if he's denied justice by the WTT. Well, today, Arunon took to, his, uh, to social media to express his dissatisfaction over two ranking penalties imposed on him in two months and a monetary penalty also imposed by the WTT. Uh, he said he's, he was being sanctioned for not participating in the World Table Tennis uh, Championship event in Korea, despite writing the WTT a month before the tournament, informing them of his ill health and his inability to participate in the tournament. And in the, in the notice of sanctions to Arnold, it says the participation in WTT Champions event is mandatory as per the WTT Series and FIDA Series Handbook and financial penalties for cancellations are applied per the respective paragraphs of Section 41, Entry, Withdrawal Offenses. Everything is well codified. Uh, similarly, as per the ITTF Table Tennis World Ranking Regulations, cancellations of automatic entries in WTT Champions events for personal reasons, as in this case, are sanctioned with a zero-point ranking penalty valid for one year. That's according to the WTT. But Arnold Cordy is not taking that line down. He's firing back uh, with a howitzer, and he's saying, why exactly must participation in the World Table Tennis Championship be mandatory when I have no paid contract with you? Why exactly do I have to leave my club that is paying me a salary to pay WTT events? Why exactly is this really mandatory? I have a family to take care of, and I have bills to pay monthly. Why exactly do I have to be forced to play where I will not win money? And he continues. He says, several prize monies are yet to be paid by the WTT, forcing players to play. My prize money from the Doha Star Contender and Goa Star Contender and even Singaporean prize money are yet to be received. And all these tournaments took place uh, last year. He said, why exactly must I leave my contract with my clubs and play the WTT champions in Korea and lose my contract with my club? Uh, Toei, this, this is... This is, um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm surprised because, like I said, Arnold Kodri is an easygoing gentleman, but he's one who's known not to take oppression lying down. He's known to stand up to bullies and to oppressors, and he's definitely facing the WTT head on. And in fact, he's actually going as far as probably to insinuate that there might be racism involved in this. And just reading something that he said, it says, it's really now a sin to come from Africa, Nigeria, and to be a black player and to stay in this top 20. All of these penalties coming from the WTT, such an injustice is totally unacceptable. Yeah, particularly if he has enough evidence to show that uh, there are other players who don't go through um, the kind of uh, uh, punishment he's, he's gone through. Um, but I think he has made very salient points. Mm. Um, if you are contracted to your club uh, and they are paying your wages and then you have to go, you are forced to play in the tournament where nothing is coming in for a professional athlete. And you have no contract I, with that no, no, body. Yeah, that's what I'm so saying. The WTT nothing, is like the table tennis equivalent of the ATP. I, exactly. Yeah. So if, if nothing is coming in, then it has every right because this is professional table tennis. Mm. You are playing for money. So it, I think it's high time the WTC, WTTC mm. um, rescinded the decision of allowing players to play in a mandatory tournament where there are no prize money, yeah. where there are no rewards. So, I mean, you have to, you, these are issues that are, I mean, very central to professional sports. Mm. And it's, it's, it's like a tennis, I mean, there, there, there's a difference between what you have in table tennis and in tennis. In tennis, you are probably not obligated to play for a club or you are paid salary by a club, but you could have... Um, I mean, companies who own your rights and all of that. But table tennis is different because yeah. you are playing in a club, you exactly. have competitions in your yeah. club, you have league competition tournaments in your club, mm. and you are paid in the club, you are promoted, you are relegated. I mean, it's, it's more of, of football. Mm. So something must be done. Uh, we're hearing that um, there's some issues going down behind the scenes because um, I don't know, Cody has a history. Of, of, of defeating Japanese players. Now, one of the tournaments was supposed to take place in Japan, where the, the national broadcaster of Japan had already sold out the rights, they were ready to broadcast, that he didn't show up. Now, he's claiming that, look, he, had, he was very ill, he had chronic diarrhea, he couldn't show up. And this was at the risk of his life, that he, he was advised by his doctors not to stay away from, from, from table to active table tennis for a period of five days. The WTT insisted that he should provide uh, a doctor's report, but said, how can I provide a doctor's report when I'm on a sick bed? Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's very tricky. It's very tricky. When you are a top-class athlete, you are in the eye of the storm all the time. In athletics, I mean, out of uh, competition tests, wherever you are, you have to make yourself available for it, mm. not, not minding whatever uh, the situation is or the circumstances are. 
So it's, it's very tricky for top athletes. If, if you've signed a contract, that's where you, when you want to sign a contract, you, are, you make sure that you, you have legal representation. You yes. lines mm. and you are able to understand everything before you put your pen to paper mm. to sign. So if you have made it, if it is mandatory for you to produce a doctor's report within a certain number of days, uh, if you're not going to be available for a tournament, then you have to live by it. Um, no matter how busy you are you. as an athlete, mm. if there is an out-of-test competition for you in one hour, mm. you must be available wherever it is. Yes. I mean, mm. So you're, you're whereabouts. So mm. it's the same thing with, with, um, table, with, with table tennis. So that there was contractual... To, yeah, so when you are a top athlete, you, there are responsibilities for top athletes. Mm. You have to be available. If you have signed the contract that, look, I'm going to be at this competition, and within, if I'm not going to be available for this competition, I'm going to send in my doctor's report at so, so, so and so time. You have to do all that you can to meet those deadlines. Mm. Well, it's well, as difficult as that. Okay, I mean, it, it seems slightly somewhat um, as if the, the WTT are being inflexible, as it were, because the man has clearly said that he does not have a contract with them. He has a contract with his club. Uh, one of the tournaments, he clear, stated very clearly that he was ill. He could not make it. Another one, he informed them one month before the tournament that he had club commitments that he had to take care of. And this is a, cl a club who pays his wages, so he could not make the, 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 the uh, competition. And there are those who are looking at this and say that, look, maybe it's because he's not a footballer. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because he's not a high-profile athlete like Etobia Musa, that if it were the, that were the case, the Ministry of Youth and Sports or the minister would have stepped in, written to World Table Tennis and asked, you know, that, uh, you know, that we could reach some kind of amicable solution. But right now, he's been punished, he's been fined, and he's dropped down on the rankings. So definitely, I think Aruna Quadri has been capitalized. And I say capitalized in the sense that you mentioned something. He's one of the athletes that, or rather, he's one of the few African athletes that has been defeating other Japanese competitors. No, was, and then yeah, uh, Asian, no, but, Asian. But then oh, besides the top, that, Aruna Quadri is one of the top ranking table tennis stars in, in the, the world. world. So whenever you have Aruna Quadri at an event, oh, it's you are sure to sell out. Mm. So that's the best player for, for a exactly. long time. So mm. the way I see it, he was capitalized. He was an opportunity. He was cashed in on at the detriment of his well-being. Because to me, it makes no sense. Especially after the fact that he was sick, he told them that, look, I could not give you a report on a sick bed. For five days, he was down, he had chronic diarrhea. How do you expect him to go for such an event of that magnitude, and you even expect him to give you 110%? Obviously, they don't care. What they wanted was Aaron Akori to turn up and to compete. Just to add to this, he says, I have worked so hard to be where I am today, and I really do not have to suffer for an offense that I did not commit. I paid mostly to pay WTT tournaments from my salary. Hmm. That means there's he no pays to play. He pays to play. And, I mean, and this, 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 if this judgment is not changed that, uh, against me, we will definitely end up in court. I will never be a slave to WTT and pay and play for bad prize money. And I, I have a good authority yeah. that players who go for these WTT events, they, they pay their own flights, so what, what, accommodation, so what so what are the feeding, benefits? What are the benefits? I'm just as confounded so, as you. So, I mean, and, it, and what I hear is that you cannot pay for just one day so that you're knocked out. Even if you're knocked out in the first uh, day, you must still, you must still update you must you know, for the entirety no, of the, no, the tournament. The, the, the issue is, if there are no benefits, if there are no rewards, no prize money, no cash awards, for pay, playing in this kind of tournament, mm. why are you playing? What's the benefit? And I say, like, if, if what the they player, say the ranking points, because it okay. moves them up, the ranking, okay. is it, it improves them, makes them more attractive to sponsors um, okay. and okay. clubs. Maybe the benefits are you are better ranked, yes, and your exactly. ranking also but helps. financially, much, what comes to... No, the, the, the issue stuff. is maybe when you are better ranked, there are better opportunities well, for yeah, you. Bigger more exposure. exposure. More sponsorship for you. So maybe those are the benefits. Mm -hmm. But I think it's high time players came together. Um, if you are contracted to your club, and the clubs also need to step in mm. and get involved in this kind of, 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 of situation. A player is contracted to you, he is not available to, for, to play some games, some competitions for you because he has to go play uh, the WTTC uh, event, mm. then the clubs also have to come together and fight for these players exactly. and ensure that these issues are resolved mm -hmm. so that a player that is contracted to play for his club, where he's paid, mm. can honor the obligation to the club. Of course, because and the then they, or yes, the obligation has to be to, the obligation the club. to, to your club because well, they are paying you. Maybe it's also yeah. because that, uh, like the, unlike the ATP, the ATP was actually set up by the players. The WTT is not set up by players. It's actually set up by the ITTF as a, uh, as a separate entity to commercialize w, uh, w, I, uh, table That's tennis the key word there, to commercialize. The commercialize. So yeah. there must be some benefits. So they should, they should I mean, I, I want to see how this 
um, ways out now, yes. how it plays out, developments around this story, mm -hmm. because I want to see how the clubs will rise up in defense I of their players. I want to see what other players are going to say. Yes. Now that Arnold Cody has come out as yeah, well. So say. that's so, the thing. That's the thing. Nobody else is saying anything. He's he's living. He's basically fighting this solo. And from what I've heard, on good authority, that a lot of players are actually unhappy with the high-handedness of the WTT. Nobody's going to say anything. No official is going to stick his neck out because of the politics going on. Then Arono should get ready for a big fight. And uh, probably this is going to be the liberation mm. that, the, that the players will, will need. I mean, it was a, a boss man that yes. decided yeah. to fight John and fight Mark alone yeah. until the boss man ruling came and mm. helped players with uh, uh, their, their movement, yeah, movement the, across mm. borders and all of that. So... I don't know if he's fighting the just cause. If, mm. if he's able to push this through, uh, get the club behind him. He should just keep on fighting. Right. If it is a just cause, then it's, it's, it's worth fighting for. But then court is not cheap either. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's another round of expenditure. Mm. On yeah. Him. yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, then, but then it's something that you can explore and, and see how far Definitely. it goes. But if it, it's if, worth the fight. If support mm. needs to come from Nigeria, from all those who are involved, uh, I'm outside sure. Outside yes. Africa. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, because I don't know for a long time was Africa's best player. Yes, he's he an African Recently, mm. when maybe these deductions caused the sleep, yeah. mm. Africa, everybody should rise up behind Aruno no and doubt. help him I, get I, justice. I, I completely and totally agree. But we will be keeping a very close eye on this uh, particular issue and uh, exactly how it develops. Uh, well, let's uh, leave Aruno Kodri and his troubles behind and also talk about another Nigerian athlete who's doing really well in international sports. I'm talking about uh, heavyweight contender, Ife Ajagba. Remember, he was a, an Olympian in 2014 in Rio, and he still, he's moved on to the heavyweight ranks, where he's one of the finest heavyweights in the world, has arguably, well, I think, uh, on record to have the longest reach in the heavyweight division, 85 inches of pure uh, thundering, uh, well, do I say delta power coming at you? <laughs> uh, well, he's set to defend his W beast, a recent victory over Joseph Goodall. Meanwhile, Bianello, who has 14 fights, 12 wins, and one draw, and one loss, uh, is recently coming up a win against Moses Johnson. He sees this bout as an opportunity to showcase his skills. Well, if Ajagba has always been regarded as one of Nigeria's finest heavy uh, prospects, until maybe he was shown up by Frank Sanchez, I think that two years ago, the Cuban Flash, uh, who defeated him uh, against all, all odds. I mean, he still has no, the record. Cuba, I mean, yeah. that, that, uh, I mean, well, <laughs> if you well think it, if, if Cuba is, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. world power yeah, in, of course. In, in boxing. So, so it was not a surprise for a lot of people, yeah. yeah but he still surprise. has a fearsome record, still has yeah. the fastest victory in the... What's in knockout it, is, is a huge statement. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. looking at him now, a lot of people are saying it's just a matter of time before he begins to figure in the conversation for a world title. Mm -hmm. uh, the likes of Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, more high-profile heavyweight um, clashes. Yeah, because but Ajagba, definitely, Ajagba still seems to have the exactly, better record. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, definitely, he does have the better record on paper. So I'm looking forward to this. But I do want Ifi Ajagba to go into this um, with the aim of making a name for himself. Definitely, we do want him to be in that conversation when it comes to um, world um, heavyweight bouts. Mm. So if he can do this, this will be great. Just like you said, we're getting close to the end of an era talking about the yeah. likes of Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. um, Anthony Joshua. So Wilder. having Deontay Wilder as well. So having Nigeria as a Jack, but get into that conversation, mm. that conversation, it will be great. Mm. But, but, but Tony, you also look at uh, if you're Jack, and, and there are those who are saying that, I mean, they look at his record and uh, that he's probably one of the most avoided men in the heavyweight division. Is this... Is this, is this, um, yeah, is this I mean, his, his records are uh, terrifying. It's one thing yeah. to have a record, yeah. but what about the yeah. performance to back it up? Yeah, mm -hmm. he, he's, he's a, I mean, his punches are powerful, so Honestly, it gets yeah. anybody down. Um, but I think I want to agree with uh, Okwe um, that he's getting into his peak, uh, whatever he needs to do to quickly move into the ranks, where I will get a shot at the world title, he needs to do that very quickly because um, time is not exactly uh, on his yeah. side. Uh, but then you only can do so much, take out whoever is in front of you, as they say in sports. Yes. So mm. let him go out there, take out this, um, uh, this yeah, 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 fight, yeah. and mm. then push himself up for, for bigger, bigger yeah, paydays. Mm. That's agree. what he has uh, to do. Yeah, well, both of them are six foot, six inch tall. Uh, so it's a, a proper battle of the giants between our own Ifea Jagba and the Vianello of Italy. Uh, still talking basketball, uh, boxing now, let's tell you that the Court of Arbitration for Sport has rejected the International Boxing Association's appeal uh, after the IOC withdrew recognition from the International Boxing Association. Uh, don't forget that uh, the, because of infighting and uh, a lack of transparency and uh, issues regarding refereeing and the scoring of, uh, 
of, uh, of fights, the International Olympic Committee had actually withdrawn uh, official recognition of, from the uh, International Boxing Association, which meant that they were no longer in charge of boxing, and which meant that boxing was in danger of uh, losing its Olympic status. Uh, but now, I mean, of course, uh, the IBA went to court of arbitration for sports. They appealed, but the appeal uh, was thrown out. IOC's uh, decision was upheld. And now it is most likely that a rival body that was recently set up, the World Boxing, who already have the likes of the United States in their corner, will seek for IOC uh, official recognition and become the body now that will be in charge of amateur boxing. But it's interesting because there are those who say it's all politics. The president of the IBA is actually Russian. You know <laughs> the issues with Russia, the United States, and the West. Uh, it was pretty much a case of walking to the answer as far as a lot of people are concerned. But so it is, it, it's, it's a question of the more you look, the less you see. Absolutely. But there, are, but there, are, there have been existing questions regarding the quality of refereeing at international Absolutely. boxing events. I mean, I, I also remember that um, we, we were at the, at the wrong end of a decision as well. True. Uh, at the Africa Games, oh, yeah. where a Nigerian boxer True. almost killed yeah. his Moroccan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bonnet, yeah. We could have had nine gold medals. Yeah. But then he lost. He lost the fight from from the according scoring, to the referees, yeah. the, the, the second mm, the, points, the, the yeah. modified scoring. He won he by, won by, by the, three he won three two it, according yeah. to the judges' score. But, but they bought another was, two judges who now scored in favor of the American. I mean, four, three. Who, whose decision could override those of the judges? Mm. Um, and I also know that in Nigeria, the uh, boxing federation are also in the middle of big crisis because mm. of uh, the body in charge of amateur boxing. Yes. Uh, uh, as a fallout of Niger this, that's the Nigerian Boxing Federation. Mm. As a fallout of this decision that mm. uh, has now been made by by Cass. Cass. So um, it, it's 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 um, it's not a very pleasant one. But I hope that um, in the interest of amateur boxing, which is um, our forty, yeah. I mean going to the Olympics, you know how many boxers. Oh yeah. Oh, our, yeah. Our, 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 that, that's our pedigree that we've our had. Our yeah. first ever medal at the Olympics was boxing. Yeah. So. Uh, for, for a country like Nigeria that has invested so much in amateur boxing, we should be, we should be, we should be interested in uh, whatever comes out of, uh, of this decision and try to put our own house in order mm. and ensure that um, we are I not, do, I do, we are I do, not I, logged out of, uh, of the Olympics. Very true. I do, I do, I'm, I'm very aware that um, the Nigerian Boxing Federation have already started aligning themselves to the new uh, world boxing uh, even yeah. before this the, the decision came. So yeah, you know, you know, mm. you know the crisis within the Boxing Federation in Nigeria. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because of this, I mean, shift and exactly. the changes mm. and all of that, the president of the Federation, uh, the general, Minima, Minima. Um, a group of board members said he was pushed aside, stepped aside, mm. and then Minima and a few of the other board members said, okay, they impeached. <laughs> the 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 those issues were oh, there. Yeah. So for, we for a also have our own inner corporate so politics also have, going yeah, on. So we have to sort all of these things out yeah. so that we don't lock ourselves out oh. of, uh, of the Olympics. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, we'll just be watching that. Uh, a situation as it also progresses as well. But let's also tell you that uh, there, uh, finally on this part of the show, let's also give you some news. that NBA star Rajon Rondo has officially announced his retirement. Uh, he is a four-time All-Star and a two-time NBA champion. Uh, Rondo last played in the 2021-2022 season with the LA Lakers and Cleveland Cavaliers. He led the NBA in steals per game in the 2009-2010 season and in assists per game in the 2011-2012, 2012-2013, 2012, and 2015-2016 seasons. He also made the league's all-defensive team four times won the NBA titles. He, he, is, he is, because mm. when you think about it, especially now in basketball today, we have more technically gifted players. Tired officially from basketball, uh, and that's the last time we'll ever see him on an NBA, on an NBA court. Uh, leaves with a record of uh, uh, nine never point. Never, he could come back. <laughs> well, yeah, it's possible. It's been not to happen. I mean, Michael Jordan mm, did true. it. Did come back. But he's 30 years mm. right now. So, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> what are the odds? Well, he averaged 9.8 points, 7.9 assists, and 4.5 rebounds, and 1.6 steals in 957 career games, where he started 733 times. Mm. Uh, it's been a wonderful career. And thank you for your service, Rajon Rondo. You're still watching Game One. We'll take a short break and return. It's football all the way. Thank you so much for staying tuned. You're still watching Game On here on News Central Television. It's time to talk football now. And we start.
from the home front where there was one match played in the Nigeria Professional Football League today. Uh, Gombe United, of course, you remember that they're serving some punishment for uh, crowd infractions. Uh, they played out a goalless draw at home at the Pantamine Stadium to Remo Stars, who, of course, are gunning for the title this season. Uh, the other game that should have taken place today, Rivers United uh, versus Katina United, was postponed. Of course, Rivers United are ca campaigning on the continent. They will be away to uh, USM Algiers, who are the defending champions of the CAF Competitions Cup uh, away in Algeria. So, unsurprisingly, that match was not played. But there will be games played tomorrow. Let's quickly show you those pictures of matches that will be played tomorrow. There you go. It's Abia Warriors versus Plato United. Heartland will be guests of Bielsa United. Uh, Tony, uh, our good friend, uh, who is now the general manager of uh, Heartland, uh, you know what I'm talking Mike about? Doko. Mike Doko, it seems that the magic is not magicking yet. Uh, <laughs> magic Mike really needs to bring out his well, wand. Well, we'll wait to see. Mm. The uh, magic but, will still come out. Okay, well, they're running out of time and they're running out of games. Sunshine Stars will be guests of Enugu Rangers, who have been definitely one of the form teams of the season. Aimba, the mighty elephants, will entertain Kano Pillars. This is always a great game to look forward to. Shooting Stars Football Club of uh, Ibadan will entertain Kuala United at the Lake Consalami Stadium. That is always a great game. Lobby Stars will be guests of Sporting Lagos here at the Mobalaji, uh, Mobalaji Johnson Arena. Uh, Bedan Insurance will also entertain Niger Tornadoes, while it's Aqua United versus Doma United. Let's quickly show you how the standings currently look at the top six and bottom six in the MP. FL. Yeah, there you go. That's uh, Enugu Rangers. Not Rangers. They're not no Rangers. Uh, Enugu Rangers, top of the table with 48 points, followed by Lobby Stars and Remo Stars and Eibar. That's the top four. E any one of these teams, in fact, any one of the top five teams could possibly win this title. Just four points separates fifth place from the top of the table. Kano Pillars are in sixth place uh, as it currently stands. So those are the top six uh, teams at the top of the table. Let's show you the bottom six right now. And it's uh, still Heartland, still propping up the entire uh, division. Probably the strongest team in the, on the table. Propping up 19 teams all by yourself. How, your back, how their backs haven't broken is a miracle. Gombe United second from bottom. Bielsa United in that bottom four as well. As well as Aqua United, who were champions just a few years ago. 2021, 2022, I believe. And uh, above them, Rivers United, who have uh, as many as four games, five games in hand. And uh, then just above them, Quara United as well. Right. Uh, let's uh, come back to the studio and talk about something that is very, very interesting. Football agents have been regarded as, by some as the catalyst for world football, and some even say probably they're a cog in the wheel of progress. It depends on which side of the divide that you sit on. But you can, one thing you cannot deny is they are an important part of the process from taking, identifying, polishing players and uh, providing a pipeline or a highway for them uh, to achieve their dreams. And we all know the global agents. Uh, the late, great uh, Mino Rayola, uh, this man here, uh, is also uh, that's, uh, the agent of uh, George Mendes, who's the agent of Cristiano Ronaldo. And many other people have made their names uh, sitting on some of the biggest transfers in the world. But some have also argued that some of these agents are basically uh, modern-day slave traders who are profiting from the hopes and dreams of young men. Well, with us in the studio uh, is a football agent of repute. Taiwo Kita joins us in the studio. He's a FIFA licensed agent as well. He's also played football at some point in his career. So uh, if he's looking like a footballer, that's because he was a <laughs> footballer. Uh, but he joins us now in the studio. Thank you very much, uh, Taiwo. Um, You're very welcome. Now, so a lot of people have asked this very important question. What exactly is the role of a football agent. Why do I need a football agent when I can get just get a lawyer? Thank you very much. Um, guys, thank you very much for having me here today. Yeah, it's, it's a pleasure. It. Yeah. Um, so to be fair, I think the agent does a lot of things that a lawyer might not do. Um, it is fair. It's really nice to have lawyers on your side. Like I have, you know, more than two with me. But an agent, simply put, just basically discovers the talent. Um, it helps them get to the next level and negotiate their contracts hand in hand with the lawyer as well. And simply put, just looking for the best interest of the player, you know, that's really what the agent does. Mm. Well, there are those who say that, well, some of these agents, um, that um, they go beyond the remit of what it is that they are asked to do. So what exactly is the limit of what an agent can do and cannot do? To be fair, I mean, you see these days, there's a lot of clauses in the contracts, you know, like funny things like that. However, I'm not really sure there's a limit or there's no limit. For example, I use myself as an example. You know, me coming to Nigeria, I came here to scout talent. You know, not like any clubs really asked me to do that, but I do believe, obviously, if I'm there back in England, it's going to be very hard. And I was speaking to a 
care about this. Why anyone say, hey, look, Keaton, this is the next talent. You take him, you know? Mm -hmm. So I need to come here and find my own talent so that way no one can take him from me. And then I can do that trust myself. So there's really no limits or, you know, like barriers put on us. It's just basically what the players are allowing us to do. Because I didn't think we're representing a player. Okay. So that's well, the main thing. Sorry, Tyler, we need to take yeah. a short break. Uh, when we return, we'll be continuing with this conversation. Yeah. Welcome back. You're still watching Game On here on New Central Television. We still have uh, Taiwo Keaton, who is a FIFA licensed football agent. And we'll be talking about the role of agents uh, in football. Now, Taiwo, I mean, you were talking about exactly yeah. that there's no, really no limit to what uh, players, uh, players' agents can do uh, in, in respect of their, their charges. But yeah. how about those who, who argue that these agents are pretty much exploiting these young men and women? To be, to be uh, fair, I'll be honest with you, there is a lot of news on that and it's very sad and very disheartening but again what can you really do about this when most of these agents are coming to let's let's be honest the underdeveloped and developing countries like nigeria africa in general and they're promising these kids a hope of a better you know I'll better take tomorrow to i'll take, take it to barcelona and, and unfortunately it is it now goes back to the whole genesis of the slave mentality it may they see a white person automatically they they think mm. you know all well and good, better Jesus life. Christ, better life. And to be fair, that's why I liked what FIFA is doing, because they're making everything more credible. Like now there's a whole disciplinary like um, case on everything online. Like again, if I give you my ID, you can check me. I, I, don't, I can't fake it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't pretend to be me. No one can come to you now and say they're an agent and there's no credibility. There's no line of things he or she has done. Mm -hmm. So everything has changed now. So you can just check my ID and you see who the person is. So I think that should stop, hopefully. So, but we never know. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's becoming a lot more competitive now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and that's why agents need to move around because uh, clubs have agents who are paid on uh, the basis of what talents they bring. Mm -hmm. So is that, a, is that a challenge for, for you, I mean, to move around? And you've come to Nigeria. Are you yeah. touching Ghana, Togo, you know? Other I, countries I think that's that's a very that's a very very good point you made. It's basically like everyone is you know scrambling for like the scraps of the mm -hmm. talent. And as I said earlier on, like that's why I did come to Nigeria. Like I've been scouting beyond limits. I'm actually now I have a contract with them, which makes me like their official agent. So that's really so good. Beyond, that's limits. beyond limits. Yeah, beyond, beyond limits. limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Academy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Academy. The, okay. the college show known as Academy. They're doing yeah. really amazing. Like that's Rebel Stars. Rebel yeah. Stars. Um, yeah. to me at the Academy. They're doing very well. Trust me. Like everything they're doing is so professional. The other the other day I was there and they were teaching the students chess. How many academies in Nigeria mm -hmm. teaches their, their academy players how to play Critical chess? Critical thinking. Critical attitude. thinking. Exactly. So yeah, you do have to go find mm. your own talent. And that's why sometimes being part of a big agency is good because I can be here talking about the benefits of an agent. My partners can be in Scotland, Sweden, doing their own thing and vice versa. Because let's be honest, no one can be in two places at you know, mm. one. Yeah. So you do need to kind of delegate those kind of opportunities. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, so I, I think for me, let me just give a scenario. We spoke yeah. about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. So um, one of the stars from the VRG tournament, um, Obviously, Beyond Limits was also involved in that. Yeah, they won the tournament. Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. So we had Ojudu FC and we had Ikurudu FC as well being part of them. One right. of the stars from Ojudu FC, um, he got signed. Or rather, signed. Currently, yes, Hafiz Uma. Yeah. So he's currently having a loan spell with Chelsea. Trials. Or trials, trials rather. Yeah, trials, trials, um, yeah. Pardon me. And then before that, he had Ojudu FC and Bodo Glimt of Norway had an agreed deal, right? In my own opinion, I'm not a FIFA licensed agent. Yeah. You are now. But I want to, uh, your opinion on this. For me, I felt like he should have signed with um, Bodo Bodo Lint, because I feel like he would have had first team opportunity and yeah. going straight to the first team. Compared to um, the, the Chelsea, current Chelsea, Chelsea yeah. now, who for me, the academy right now is upside down. So yeah. it's not the same during the days mm -hmm. of the Rich James and Colin mm -hmm. Gallagher, who went through the eight grades yeah, like a development. and then yeah. got promoted to the system. So for you, when you have a player in that position, what kind of advice would you give to a player? When you've got a small club, you're going to play first in football, but then there's the opportunity of get going to a big club and, and yeah. thinking far. So one of my really good mentors, um, Ladi Salami, who is Odion Igalo's agent, he always says this in this industry, and it's very cliche, but patience is a virtue. Hmm. So just by knowing that, I'm 100% going to go with the Bordeaux because I know if this guy can stay two years in this club, get first team, his value is going to increase in the future. You know, look at it counterclockwise now. He goes to Chelsea, maybe he has one season, they might play him one time or loan him out. Loan him out. Mm -hmm. His career might literally keep going down from there. Mm -hmm. Him going to Chelsea might be the pinnacle. There's a lot of players that have done that and it didn't work for them. True. But again, you have to look at it from his own perspective. Mm -hmm. Coming from, you say it was from Kano. Kano yeah, yeah. 
everyone there probably talks about Chelsea, Arsenal, Man U, Man City. And, you can't money. and the money as well. <laughs> so unfortunately, you need to have an agent that wants to work with you and understands your vision mm -hmm. and say, look, man, for the future, let's do it the right way. We are not just like a money-hungry agent. Mm -hmm. That's really the question. I, I want. How do you deal with all these players and their families who are basically thinking, of, look, let's take the money now. This big club is not really in money now. And, and they're not really looking at what you're looking at, yeah. that looking, charting a proper pathway for this player from nothing to stardom. How, yeah. how do you deal with that? I think that's where trust in the agent comes in. I think that's where having a really good relationship with their parents and telling them or sh and showing them case studies and examples of other players that might have done that in the past and mm. seeing if it worked out or didn't work out. Um, I'll be honest with you, the, the agency industry is so, it's, it's like a, um, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm. Everyone is like, just, <laughs> everybody's it's, grabbing it's, something. It's, yeah. I don't know if I can, it's crazy. I don't know if mm. I can say it online, mm. but yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. Literally, like you find agents, come, it's so funny, like one of my, uh, my good friends, Dean Lockwood, so he's a stakeholder at Manchester United because um, his, his um, daughter plays for Manchester United mm. basically. And he was saying, like, when she was, like, 12, he had, like, two agents in his house, like, literally already t telling him hmm. that they want to be his daughter's agent. A 12-year-old girl, what are you doing in my house telling me you want to be my daughter's agent? So where, where do you, where, how do you even manage to negotiate or, or even, do I say, navigate through those uh, situations where you have a big club that's promising the family, that, look, we're going to build you a house, hmm. we're going to buy you a car, we're going to move you to England, basically turn the player's head. Yeah. How, how do you manage to even, do you just hands up and just, well, hey, I've done the best I can. Yeah. Or do you stay and fight? To be fair, you can only do as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, you know, as much as we want to be like good examples and things, sometimes money does have a very big factor because mm -hmm. you don't know how much the, the parents have invested in that mm -hmm. player. You know, especially if I'm talking to like younger players and I have to go to their parents, I 100% make it a factor for me to literally understand where their parents are coming from. Because you're just coming when the player is 18 years old, True. or 17 or 18, you know, mm. whatever. These guys have been in his life for 17, 18 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've invested more than you can ever invest. Mm. So you have to be very patient with them and understand and just be honest with them. Like, look, this money is a lot, but, mm. you know, here we so, go. Sorry, okay. I, know, I know there's so much you want to unpack, yeah, but we're yeah, really yeah, much yeah. running out of time. So. I basically have four minutes. Yeah, that's just fine, that's but thank fine. you so much for coming through Ty, yeah. Ty Wokit, my FIFA license agent, speaking thank about uh, the role uh, of a, a, an agent and exactly in the football pipeline or the football pathway uh, to greatness. Let's uh, move on and tell you that there will be a match, uh, an Olympic qualifier this weekend between the Super Falcons of Nigeria, nine-time African champions, and the Bayana Bayana of South Africa, the reigning African champions. Well, we heard that 18 players are already in camp, uh, the likes of Deborah Abiodun, Chidima Okeke, Halima Twainde, uh, Asisa Toshwala as well, Chiwendo uh, Ihezu. Uh, no, those, no, those ones have been expected. Uh, the likes of Michelle Alozier. Uh, Shola coming on Thursday as well. But uh, Coach Randy Waldron was speaking earlier today about what he expects from that match. My thoughts on South Africa are they've, uh, they've got a very good side. Uh, obviously, I think they're the defending African champions, so uh, we have to have respect for them. And uh, I love some of the individual talent that they have uh, up front uh, in particular. I know they're very dangerous, and, and I think um, their coach does a really good job of having them organized. Um, but as I've said before, and I said at the, the World Cup, and I continue to say, I really like our, our team and our squad. And uh, I have all the confidence uh, in our players that will perform really well. I do think it's time. I think this team is a, seems to me, well, Super uh, Falcons coach Randy Waldron uh, speaking very positively about his team's chances against the Bayana Bayana of South Africa on Friday. Let's uh, move on now and tell you that the race for the host of the final match of the 2030 FIFA World Cup has already begun even before uh, the first ball has been kicked. And that's because you remember that uh, it's, it's going to be hosted by three countries. That's uh, Morocco, Spain, and Portugal. Well, Morocco are playing, pulling no punches. They are going to build the biggest stadium in the world 115,000 capacity on the outskirts of Casablanca. Uh, everybody expects that, you know, Spain will host the final, either the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium or the newly built uh, new camp. Well, uh, <laughs> 
Morocco has different, uh, different ideas. They're building a brand new stadium, 115,000 at a cost of 459 million euros. It is going to be the largest stadium in the world, surpassing the Rungrado First May Stadium in Pyongyang uh, that has a capacity of 114,000. But we do know that it can be expanded to 150,000. In addition to the huge capacity, it also feature an athletics track, an indoor swimming pool, a shopping center, a hotel, uh, and will fulfill every single FIFA requirement and everybody expects that it's, uh, the FIFA World Cup in 2030 to have 1.5 billion viewers. Well, uh, guys, uh, that's uh, how much we have on the we can take on the show. We're really sorry we ran out of time, but we've had a great conversation uh, discussing uh, the troubles of uh, Arnold Quadri. We hope that the authorities here in Nigeria will back him up. We've had a great conversation with Tao Kito, a FIFA license agent as well, speaking about FIFA, uh, um, about FIFA license agents' roles uh, in the football pathway. Thank you very much, uh, Tony Bitoy. Always a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Tao Kito, always a pleasure, to, uh, a pleasure to have you as well for the first time on the show. Hopefully, I'll have you some other time as well. Uh, uh, Barry, you still have to confess when you <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that. But thanks to everyone behind the scenes who made this uh, possible as well. But before we go, uh, let's tell you that uh, football, fi well, fo I know that football uh, players are supposed to be opponents, but sometimes even teammates can be opponents as well. Yes, many years ago in Newcastle United, uh, Lee Boyer. Uh, and his uh, teammates, <laughs> Kieran Dyer, yeah, remember this one quite well, oh, gentlemen. Oh, oh, uh, both of them went at it. Uh, in act well, they bet they were, they were losing. Student, yeah, they lost. Uh, they lost three 0 at home to Aston Villa. Both of them were not happy because they think uh, <laughs> Boyer was frustrated that Dyer was not pa passing to him. Uh, both of them were actually Can sent off, even. and the fight even continued in the dressing room. <laughs> uh, and they only ended when the coach Graham soon has said we were going to fight both of them. Well, that's all we have on the show. Thank you so much again for joining us on this edition of uh, Game On. Show makes a turn. Uh, return tomorrow. My name is Babatunde Kweki. Wishing you a wonderful evening. Bye bye.